everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Podcast. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. Not only do we have an action-packed uh, podcast today, I got truly one of my greatest heroes around. I mean, he is the Steve Reef. Reese. He is the CEO of Reese Consulting and Reese Training, and he's also very uh, involved in global LNG markets and natural gas. He has huge uh, reach around the energy space. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here, Steve. Uh, it's always my pleasure, and, and I, I just love these discussions. Uh, you know what, Steve? I have had so much fun interacting with you and and really having fun. Some of the cool things about Reese Consulting is that you guys have a lot of huge projects going on. Tell us uh, just a little bit about what your background is, because even though you're a retread, as I affectionately call people that are brave enough to come on the podcast <laughs> multiple times, uh, you've done a fantastic job. Tell us a, a, a hair about how you've been in the business uh, a little while. You've got more hair than me uh, for our podcast listeners. He's a good looking guy, but he I'm jealous of his hairline. So, Steve, tell us a little bit about what you got going on. Well, I, I can I can hear mostly for for my self-esteem uh, for my hairlines, too. So I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I'll take what I get. Um, you know, this is year 42 for me in, in the natural gas, mostly the natural gas arena, but the energy arena. And uh, the last, um, uh, it's been almost 30 years to the day that I've been an entrepreneur. And uh, after my careers at Getty Oil in Texaco, uh, I've had the consulting company now during this time as well as uh, the training materials, my copyrighted seminars that uh, that we're getting ready to reintroduce to an online platform. Uh, we've grown now to our staff is phenomenal. Uh, we, we are now literally in every basin. We're, we're doing a, a work in uh, from the Marcellus to the Haynesville to the Permian to the Midcon to the DJ and Baca and you name it. So, we're, we're excited um, about that. The consulting side right now, it seems like that the project du jour, if you will, the thing that's kind of on fire is our midstream auditing where we uh, help producers ensure that they're paid correctly under their gas contracts and also hmm. in the field. And uh, I, I'm proud to say in the last four years we've now audited five percent of all the gas in the united states and we're still churning we've we've audited over wow. five piece five billion cubic feet a day we're engaged with some fantastic clients like chesapeake and southwestern energy and wow. scout energy uh we're, we're heavily involved in in the larger basins and uh and my staff has just done a phenomenal job, both on the accounting, the commercial sides, the contractual mm. sides, and also in the field. And um, so that business right now is really ramping up. I'm hiring, uh, hiring more auditors and more project managers uh, as we speak. I'll tell you, Steve, uh, also, you've got your training, and uh, mm -hmm. training is so critical for the next generation of kids uh, and the next ge generation of folks coming around the corner. Your copyrighted training and everything else, tell us a little bit about that, because that is our future. Well, those of uh, that might watch this that have known me over the years, um, I taught my courses live from about um, uh, the mid '90s uh, up until about 2015 uh, to over 20,000 industry and professionals, uh, and I taught them live at Devon and Enbridge and Chesapeake and Enterprise and all, all the large companies. And um, still today, it, it uh, fills my heart. Somebody will say that. 
you know, one of my course books is still on their desk or I was, I was the first ugly face they saw when they went to work one day, they threw them in a training room, right. in, a, in an auditorium. So, um, as, as, um, the live training seems to have diminished, diminished in the last five or six years in a lot of the large companies. Reese Consulting, we began to focus on the consulting portion, but I feel the same way as you. There's a generational shift, and I was fortunate enough to two dear friends, Bill Shanahan and Brian Peary with Energy Rogue, approached me and nice. said, you know, dude, we're, we're technical guys, but we know the business. We would like to take your courses online. We want to record, do the recordings. And so we're right now, Stu, in the process of recording the first, the Gas 101, the Natural Gas Basics course of mine. Right. Uh, where next will be, uh, there's a gas transportation course. There's going to be a midstream course, nice. a trading course, on and on. They will excuse me, the rope guys will be with us at our booth at, at night, nice. and that's kind of when we're going to announce, you know, the rollout of these training courses. And we're going to have them, our business model is, is this. We're, we're going to take each course and break it up into 30-minute snippets or 45-minute snippets right. where people can go on and take those at their leisure they're going to be priced to where, um, the, you know, people may not even expense them because we're going to put them where they're very affordable for even just regular individuals. Nice. And um, also have a premium subscription for a community where once a month they can put all their questions out there and have a Q&A with me, you know, each month directly. That's huge. Yeah. And so we are in talks with various channel partners. Uh, we want to obviously get in the door with with the Chevrons and the Shells and Exxon Mobiles. But really, our key is is the younger generation. Whether it's something like the Houston Independent School District, or whether it's the University of Texas, or whoever. Even if if they're not in the industry yet, one thing we're also realizing our market is to with with the green energy push, you know, the administration continues to say, well, we'll just move a compressor mechanic over and have him work on a solar panel. Number one, that's probably not going to happen. But number two, those places aren't logistically connected. Mm -mm. We think. We really believe that still today, natural gas is not a bridge fuel. It is the fuel of right. yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We think a lot of young people that are enamored with the green energy, with the wind and the solar and all that, will get interested in the natural gas business and realize that's why CO2 has come down in the last 15 years is because of, of natural gas. So we're really excited about it. And at my uh, ripe young age, uh, you know, I look at the royalties from this, something that will help my family still in years to come. So uh, we're that's excited. Exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting. And obviously, when we see you guys at NAEP, I'll give you a good intro to uh, to Brian and Bill as well. I can't wait to see them. I, I just I get your email every day, and I highly recommend the data that they put out. But Steve, uh, there's about 16 things. You know how uh, I, I I can't stand you know when you say something. I'm like, oh, uh, we're looking and we're trying to get it rolled out for homeschool. And your market would be fabulous for homeschooling consortiums because as we try to get into that next generation of of kids, there's a, you're seeing a major push to go to homeschooling and we're trying to make sure that all of our CEOs and all of our materials and I'm gearing up so that we can make tests and, and quizzes and everything else that we can make all of ours. Ours is not training, but 
Steve, when you talk to CEOs of your caliber and and everybody else, you learn things. Now, well, you under, and you understand you're preached to the choir. You know, we homeschooled our children. <laughs> so yes, we I have thought about that, and obviously there are going to be. Um, we're very well connected in the homeschool community and in, in all in Oklahoma and some parts of Texas through yep. just our boys. And so I, I agree with that 100 percent. And we'd love to help you with that. We know yes. all the principals and the, like the Edmond homeschool and the Oklahoma City homeschool communities. They're great people. And, and that's an excellent, excellent idea. And, and it's my way to give back. And, and so, uh, in fact, uh, I've had so much feedback on this that it was like, your podcasts are great because of my guests and they have great topics. But let's go back to the natural gas and the move in the future for our kids. And that is, I see um, a huge move, Steve, uh, because it's the LNG. You know, Europe is in a dire need for energy. Asia, um, China just uh, did the uh, 27-year LNG contract with Qatar. And then you have... um, and I, I love the way you phrase it, that it is the fuel. If you have a base load with uh, nuclear, natural gas, you can actually get business done at low cost kilowatt per hour. And there is a huge run away from all of the wind farms offshore. They're bailing on it. Orsted's going bankrupt. They're bailing on it, even with your money and my money being thrown at them, right? <laughs> you know, uh, but, but, you know, sometimes I've learned in my career, sometimes certain things have to run their course, good, bad, or indifferent, right? And, right. and, and, and we've, we've seen that and we're experiencing that. Uh, I hate it that on a lot of the offshore wind where on the surface you think that's a no-brainer, but the econs just aren't there. And now that this administration wants to put billions and billions of our own hard work money towards projects that are failures, you know, it, it's sad. But that's okay. I, I'm, I, you know, uh, me and my team, we look forward. We're, we're positive. We're, we're going to just put one foot in front of the other every day and work hard. What what about the cool thing about Texas? We have half the cost of the energy uh, for consumers. That you know, half of what New York is, half of what California is. We have wind, solar, nuclear, coal. Uh, we love energy. Doesn't matter, you know what it what it is. But the legislature adding in all those billions of dollars for natural gas plants. What are your thoughts on that? That's pretty darn cool. Somebody woke up uh, in, 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 in reality. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and like, what? Well, look at that. Two plus two does equal four, right? You know? Oh, yeah. So, no, that's that's um, that's a step in the right direction. And natural gas, and, and, and there are times, does natural gas have some issues from time to time? Of course. The, the big freeze in 21 yeah, there were some things that happened and some other things were needed. Uh, right. I'm not opposed to to really to, to especially I'm not opposed to solar in specific spots. Right. If you fly to if you fly to Vegas and look out the window in the desert, there's a huge solar farm. That's a great idea. Why not? You know, you got tons of sun out there. So that works. Or uh, um, or or. You know what I think about these EVs, of course. I don't think they're worth much, but there are certain scenarios where an electric vehicle, if you're a commuter in a big city, whatever, okay, that's fine. But you can sell me a Ford F-150 electric vehicle for, for 150 grand. A farmer's going to just laugh you off the planet. So, And and, and they're losing, Ford's losing, what, $20,000 a vehicle. And then yesterday, uh, Ram announced, Steve, you and I would, I'd pull up at OU. They would probably laugh us, both me and you, out of there. 
and that is uh, it has a, a six a V6 in it, and with a six-cylinder engine, it, all that engine is to do is to charge the batteries. There's no connection between that engine and and the drivetrain. So. Yeah. I, I honestly, and so the batteries on this bad dog are, uh, it will go 120 miles. That won't even get you from your house to Tulsa. And, 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 and so then you get to drive with your six cylinder engine, like a world war two submarine. And the reason they did that, Steve, was because the, the thing will charge it from here to here. And then um, it qualifies for the loans, the tax uh, deductions, and everything else. But what got me is why don't we use hybrids? One EV battery will supply the battery technology, uh, the battery raw materials for 190 um, of the uh, hybrids. I don't. Yeah, it's, it's it's insanity, but you know. Uh, I, uh, I, I I don't get it. I, I understand people have certain agendas, but um, I'll, I'll let them have those and I'll chase stuff that makes money, right? You know? And what's good for the environment? Because uh, the EIA last year, the EIA said the only reason the U.S. reduced, you brought this point up and it was f fabulous. The EIA uh, said that natural gas was the only reason the U.S. reduced its uh, emissions. That's yeah. pretty strong. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. But you know, it's it's uh, we're excited about the future, and and uh, um, I'll, I'll I'll move into the international stuff. You know, I know you and I have had discussions a little bit about our new venture, and I know you've talked to a couple of my partners. Uh, Ted Muftick and, and Pierce Kirby. So American Gas Partners is live. Uh, we're in Berlin today with, uh, we have hired consultants from even uh, Roland Berger, the largest consultancy in Germany. We've nice. got uh, project managers over there. We're uh, beginning discussions with uh, roughly 150 uh, industrial end users and uh, so the philosophy is this, the philosophy behind this will be a, a German owned infrastructure fund and the infrastructure fund will fund uh, assets, uh, liquefaction, uh, the shipping and the regasification in Europe for U.S. shale gas to be exported from the Gulf Coast. And so our, wow. our philosophy goes further in that, you know, our message initially was no one else is really doing this. You know, of course, here's Shell doing their deals or Cutter or whoever it is doing their deals, and that's fine. But we have the relationships in Germany. We, we, we Pierce, right. Ed, and my team over there, they know these people. They've worked over there. They've worked in Russia and Ukraine and Germany and Western Europe. Right. And um, what's happened, as you well know, is with the wind stuff being forced on the German public over the last few years, right. their electricity prices have got to the point that the manufacturing, uh, they've lost tens of thousands of jobs. So our message both to the Germans right now is we're here to save your jobs. We're here to, to bring LNG that's affordable, cheap, reliable, environmentally friendly, and it works. We're here to save your jobs. So we're in discussions with, with all the guys. Um, nice. We have a large, you know, we're, we have a large raise that we need to do. However, we're confident that we're going to get a lot of running room. And at a certain point, We'll pivot and have my contacts at the big U.S. gas producers and say, "Nice, oh, let's dedicate your gas to this. Maybe you want to invest in this. And um, our goal is to be doing anywhere, I'm going to be realistic, anywhere from, say, two to five uh, metric tons per annum in about three years. So, so maybe 2026. 
that's not long. And uh, yeah. Germany has had to uh, VW closed. Uh, they closed the the oldest steel mill in Germany this year because uh, they couldn't get enough power. And then they're buying all their electricity from coal. They took Steve. This is terrible. They had to take a coal. Uh, do you remember Greta when she was being hauled off because she was protesting? Oh yeah. Okay, that was a that was a photo shoot or a photo sure. a photo op. Yeah. That same uh, coal plant or mine, excuse me, uh, was right next to a wind farm. They're had they're taking that wind farm down so they can dig more coal now. <laughs> so you know, Pierce and Ted and the and the guys have done their homework. And part of their message to a lot of the Germans over there is yep. they don't they think the German public right now thinks they've been real green with all this wind stuff. However, the data will show Germany has been using six times more coal than any of the surrounding European countries. And yep. and their public is waking up. Their government is moving more in a somewhat uh, conservative direction. And we think the next prime minister possibly is that that's going to be going to be put in is going to be a huge ally for us. So um, that's great. But we're just over there doing our thing. We got boots on the ground. We're spending money. We're calling on the right people. We're trying to get a collaborative effort with the right uh, geopolitical municipal and industrial forces over there to wow. to come together. Steve, you're hitting every in uh, dealing uh, with all the investors that I deal with around the world and everything else. You're hitting some key points: German-owned infrastructure. Then you're also talking about natural gas and LNG. I mean, take a look at the average contracts now. They're 20 to 27 years. Um, talk about an investment with a return. Uh, you got guarantee coming back listen, on those things. Well, so listen here. Here's our here's listen to this, and I think this is a is a uh, very unique idea. Is we're we're letting these end users know you got you got two things here. You know, if you you can invest and you're going to make a return on your investment and buy cheaper gas than if you're buying it at this this TTF index here in Germany. So no you can way. play either game. You can, and you don't have to do both. You want a cheaper gas price, then invest in the product because in the infrastructure because you'll get a return on that. So it's twofold for them. We're given the opportunity for them to do either or or both. You know what? It, and they also had to close their fertilizer plant. So if I was, uh, I believe it was BSAF. BASF, BS yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and if I was them and I'd sit there and I'd be like, uh, I need the number to 1-800-STEVE-REESE right now, because if you had the ability to invest in LNG and then guarantee that you could bring your fertilizer plant back online, I'm in. Well, we know one thing, and, and this is all over Europe, one thing, they want American shale natural gas, period. They know nice. it's reliable. They know these the the the, the drill the, the producers over here. They know where to drill. There's right. no such thing as a dry hole anymore in these shell plays. They know exactly what they're going to hit. It's clean. It's ubiquitous. It's fungible. And and I think again, it's another point of her route. Reality is is uh, you know is 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 finally checking in to our lives. So as soon as, as Turley and Associates is ready to cut us a $25 billion check, then we're off and running. <laughs> my credit card will go that high. So my, <laughs> my, my, my wife actually has tried. So, you know, we're, we're okay there. But, but I, uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're excited cool. about that. Steve, yeah. this is so cool because it's a win for the German people. It's a win for the United States. It's yeah. a win for both consumers. Sure. Um, sure. I mean, 
uh, it it is a win win win. Now, um, your your folks over there in in Germany, I visited with them one time, and I can't wait to visit with them again. So when the time is right, you know, uh, maybe they'll come in for NAPE. You know, you never know. Yeah, we're uh, we're 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 really uh, pushing. We like I said, we have made initial contact uh, out of our, our Berlin office with 150 of the, the prime uh, targets that, that we have and uh, starting to get some good feedback. And it's, it'll be a long process, but um, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're anxious to, to see you guys at name. I got a big stake at Del Frisco's with your name on it on Thursday night. Well, that sounds fantastic. I see when you and I were talking about OSU and OU, all I did was bet you for a cup of coffee. So, you know, that we'll take the cup of coffee off of the steak and then I Yeah, I, I think uh I'd rather feed you a ribeye than some stale coffee from Starbucks personally. <laughs> I don't I I normally don't buy Starbucks. I'm not yeah. I'm not a fan of, of their policies, but I agree. You know, the one thing as we roll uh, around the corner here, Steve, uh, I cannot wait to give you a hug. And I can't wait to to hear more about what you have going on with your training. Um, when you're ready for investors and stuff like that, let us know. We want to get okay. the word out because uh, uh, if you're uh, taking a look at 5% of the U.S. natural gas and auditing it and putting in mechanisms, that's a lot of gas. That's a lot of expertise. And if you, uh, the investors that I've been talking to, uh, I mean, if you take, sit back and take a look, Larry Fink has now said that it's okay to invest in uh, uh, Oxy. And the reason he's doing that is because he lost $1.7 uh, trillion last year in the first half of the year. Oops. So, yeah. and even Bill Gates said, oh, climate change is not real. Now you're on that wagon. Good. good. Uh, hey, money talks, my friend. And at the end of the day, all of these boards and, and all of these people that were pushing that you got to have an ESG score, you got to have a DEI score, you got to, oh, your CO2 score and all this. At the end of the day, it's your pocketbook. And people exactly. have to eat. People want to retire. People want to have a nice car. You know, and, and at the end of the day, these money managers that, that went woke, they're, they're getting a wake up call, you know, and, and it's mm -hmm. I call it hashtag karma. Right. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve, um, uh, your company is Steve uh, Con uh, Reese Consulting and uh, Reese Training. And then the other one is the American Gas Partners. People can get a hold of you on LinkedIn. What are other ways people can get a hold of you? LinkedIn is, is best. I'm fortunate to have a lot of followers, but there's always ReeseEnergyConsulting.com and ReeseEnergyTraining.com. And uh, the next time we uh, get on here, Stu, I'll bring in my uh, Larry, Curly, and Mo. I'll get... Uh, I'll get Bill and Brian on to talk training with you, and nice. we will definitely swing by the booth. I'd love to do the live podcast at NAPE with you, so I'll be in touch before then, and we can uh, sit down and uh, make fun of all the all the funky-looking people at NAPE one afternoon. You know, you can't buy that kind of entertainment. I was uh, just as a side note, I was over in the uh, Permian Oil Show doing live, and it was so fun. I actually was doing a live podcast to Africa. Um, Cyrus Brooks was there visiting with the, um, um, he was the uh, secretary general for the African Petroleum Producers Organization, the OPEC uh, of Africa, and they have 18 members. And here's all these people lined up. A live podcast is kind of cool. And, and that so is, that is. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make sure I'm not wearing my jammies. I'll put something decent on. Oh, but I gotta see them slippers. If, as long as I see you going by in some East, you know, some bunny slippers, we're all good. So, Steve, right. thank you so much for stopping by the podcast. My pleasure, buddy. I'll see you soon.